Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and from today we are going to start the new series that is machine learning using Python. For that, first of all, you will have to install Python. Python was conceived in late 1980s. The developer of the Python is Guido Van Rezen. In 1991, Python 0.9.0 was published and reached the masses through alt dot sources. In January of 1994, Python 1 was released. Today, Python is considered to be the very popular language for data science and machine learning. Now, how to install Python in your system? Let's see. For that, you will have to go in, you will have to write down, installing Anaconda. Why we are installing Anaconda? Because if you go, uh, install Anaconda, then all the libraries which are related to the machine learning, which are required in Python, will be installed automatically. And that's the reason we are installing Anaconda. Now, click on Anaconda distribution. It is an open source. Now, depending upon your requirement, that is Windows, MacBook or Linux, you can click here and you can install your exe file. Just press this download and you will be able to download the exe file for the Anaconda. You can also see the companies which are using Anaconda. The list is very long. Okay. Once you get the exe file, you will have to go in The, you will have, have to locate where the exe file is, run this exe file and the Jupyter Notebook will be installed. Now how to activate that Jupyter Notebook? Click here and just write down here Jupyter Notebook and click on it. And the notebook will get activated. You can see here. Now, to create the new notebook, you will have to click here, New, Python, and a new notebook will appear. To rename this existing, uh, existing notebook, you will click on it, a window will appear, you will write down, Welcome to Python, or you can say, Introduction to Python. Rename. And the name will change here. At present, you can see that this cell is having a green color strip. strip. It means that this cell is in edit mode. If you press the escape button, it will turn blue, which, is, which means that it is in the command mode. Now, we will write down our first command. Print Welcome to Machine Learning Lecture Series. Now you can run this command by pressing this run button or Control plus Enter or Shift plus Enter. There is a difference in Control plus Enter and Shift plus Enter. Let's see. If I press Control plus Enter, it will only run first line. Is it clear? But if I run Shift plus Enter, it will run the first line and it will also create the second line. You can see this. Now, if I want to write any text here, which is not a command line, I, it's just a piece of information which I want to pass. I'll use the hashtag and I can write the things here. This lecture series is for machine learning. Now it will clearly understand that this is, you can see the piece of information as I use the hashtag and it will not process this. Let us see the menus which are available in the notebook. I can go in file. I can create a new notebook from here. I can open the existing notebook which is there. I can make a copy of it save as normally uh, it's my request that whatever you whatever file you create you save it in three formats 
or rather you can download also. So download in as HTML one, Python two, and PDF via HTML. Now the reason for this is that if you have saved anything in Python, then you will be able to run this program or you can you are able to send this program to someone right so i'll request all of you that you save your file in html format because if you want to launch something on the website then it should be in html then dot py that is a python and the pdf pdf via html all these three formats are available you can go in edit mode and these are the options which are available. You can merge the cells above, below. You can cut the cells. You can copy the cells. Moreover, you can insert the cells above. Say, for example, if I have clicked here and I click on it, so it will insert the cell above it. If I say insert the cell below it, then it will insert one cell below it. From here, I can activate the markdown menu where the codes will not appear so when the output is generated the codes will not be uh, codes will not be there in the in the document so depending upon your requirement you can select codes raw nb convert heading whatever you want so at present keep the things on codes only now there are some libraries which are required for data science as well as machine learning one of the libraries is numpy NumPy offers multidimensional data structures on which operations can be performed far quicker than the standard Python data structures. This is done in the part by performing operations in the background using C. NumPy also offers various mathematical and data manipulation functions. You don't need to worry about this library because once you have installed through Anaconda, all these libraries will be loaded by default. Then. Pandas. Pandas is a Python's answer to the R data frame. It stores the data in 2D tabular structures where columns represent the different variables and row correspond to the samples. Pandas provides many handy tools for data wrangling such as filling in NAN entries and computing the statistical descriptions of the data. Working with Pandas data frame will be a big focus for this lecture series. Matplotlib is a plotting tool inspired by MATLAB platform. Those who are familiar with R, they must be aware about the ggplot. It's a very popular library in R. Similarly, is a case of matplotlib. It allows for the plotting of figures and allows a high level of customizations also. I request all my viewers to refer my video on data science using Python in which I have discussed the entire uh, and uh, all, all the series, all the lectures of data science, as well as all the libraries which are related to the graphical representation of the data using Matplotlib, Seaborn, various libraries. Then there is a Seaborn. Seaborn works as an extension to Matplotlib, where various plotting tools are used for data science. Generally speaking, this allows for analysis to be done much faster in comparison to other libraries. Now let's see how to load the files in Python. So first of all, we will have to have to activate from NumPy. Whenever I write such command, it means that it will activate the library of NumPy. Once the library is activated, I will be able to use all the functions which are there in this library. So I'm writing here from NumPy, import load text. Then I'll specify the file name is equal to so this is a place where my file name is located. A file is located. Then I'll specify the raw data. So open the file name, which is this one, and RB, that is the file name which is to be open. Then I'll say data is equal to load text raw data, which is this one. And there are delimiters in this data, which are commas. And when I will run this, I'll get the dimensions of the data. It means that there are nine columns and 768 entries are there. This particular thing I can also run in another way. From pandas, import read underscore CSV. File name, again, I'll have to specify where the file is located. 
names that is the names of the variables which are there data read underscore csv file name so this is a file name which is there and this is the names which is there and print data dot shape so i'll get again the same structure now how to write this link how to write this link that where our file is located let's see i'll go at the place where this file is located say so for example my file name is this one uh, or okay this one now you right click here and here copy as path activate that copy as path okay and then you come in this window and press control v so you will be able to press you will be able to get the entire link where the file is located now when i will run data.head into round brackets it will give me what are the variables which are there in this data set okay it will give me which are the variables so prag plus press scheme these are all the variables and these are all the observations so there are at, at present you will be able be able to only see five entries because we are running data dot head if you want to see the last five entries you will write down data dot tail and you'll get last last five entries now there will be a requirements of some advanced libraries like sklearn quandel mglearn statistics in our uh, further sessions so when the time will come i will instruct you how to install this libraries in python so for more videos on machine learning using python kindly subscribe to my channel you can refer my playlist in which i have already uploaded many videos which are related to machine learning using python please don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the like button you can follow me on linkedin and twitter